evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. everybody how you doing welcome to another episode of dcf live coming to you guys from the dcf studio here on the south side of chicago friday january 28th joined by a very special guest today my <laughs> wife Brittany. first time she's been on since uh the uh 10 hour live stream when was that uh june of 2020 oh so it's God. been a year and a half <laughs> but uh a lot of people said they enjoyed having you on that one so we are glad to have you back Today we're doing a little stream, just uh, celebrating that we hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's so exciting. Hard to believe. <laughs> Hard to believe. So hopefully everybody is having a great week. It is now officially Friday, so we're going to say hello to some people here in the chat. I see my brother Daniel's here. Divinely Guided, Sneakers, Joel, Kangi, Divinely Guided, oh, I already said that one, Steven. Don, John Becker, Don, killer pair that you had for the Heritage Contest, man. Love those. That might have been the only pair of uh, Jordan 3s that was in the uh, entire contest. So that's pretty cool because, man, I love Jordan 3s. That's what I was working on uh, today, too, actually, a pair of uh, Pistons Jordan 3s with the uh, old school logo. So that's what I was uh, working on. Jordan 3s will always be one of my favorite shoes to work on so this is the shoe that we're going to be using for our multi-layer stencil video and there is like <laughs> six colors in this uh in that logo so that's a that's a crazy one she's reading sneakers turn off the beauty filter turn off beauty. <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one uh so joel joseph says i wonder the best way to do the edges on a custom i struggle making my edges smooth it's really about finding just a good detail brush that works for you i mean you don't really need to just when it comes just getting control of of like a good detail brush that you take good care of and that it's one that you always go to when it's time to do you know your edging on your pairs and things like that that's what works best joel Test out the toothpick method if that is something that maybe you haven't tried before. You just got to find something that you know you can count on and uh, will always get you clean and consistent work. Uh, let's see here. Kengi says, hi Dylan, I was here yesterday and asked the same question but wanted you to clarify a bit more. How do you make your lines more straight and even? Angelus paint markers. So I'm actually not a big fan of markers at all, whether it's Posca markers or the Angelus markers which is essentially just Angelus paint mixed with tooth thin, um, but you still end up running into consistency issues. So when it comes to, um, you know, just clean, consistent lines, the thing that has always worked for me is, is the toothpick method. That's what I've been doing it for, for, for many, many years now. And even I still prefer it over if I have to pull like really straight lines when I'm doing a logo, sort of like that Pistons one that I showed earlier, when it comes to doing touch-ups or just doing really precise lines the the toothpick is what works best for me but you just need to practice your breathing and just you want to get something that lets you feel like you have the most control whether that's detail brushes for you because the toothpick thing isn't for everybody holding it can be weird some people say their hand their hands cramp up so you just need to find what works for you and then really practice at it and get control of your breathing and and things like that i remember so. like watching you paint or painting right next to you and I used to do it a lot yeah and literally listening like you would stop breathing yeah so for like a minute <laughs> and I'm like and I'm paying attention yep. paying attention to it and I'm like he's not breathing and then I finally hear you take a breath I'm like okay it's fine he's yep. okay <laughs> yep so I mentioned that we've only done one video on YouTube which is funny on like how to paint with a toothpick like yeah. I think that's literally the name of the video yeah and I mentioned in there that like what works for me is when I'm pulling like super precise lines, like a line that really matters, I hold my breath. Now, some tattoo artist and some other artist will tell you the opposite, that you're supposed to exhale right before you need to pull a really tight line. But what works for me, yeah, I, I'm usually not doing it for a minute yeah, long, not, hopefully not. Yeah, but what works for me <laughs> is I, I 
take a, I in, I inhale deeply and I hold my breath yeah. and I pull a really straight line and then I exhale. And that's what works for me. So that's why I think it's just about, it's always just about finding what works for you, whether yeah. that's a certain detail brush, a certain brand or toothpicks or. Yeah. Don't hold your breath for a minute. Don't yes. Do don't do that one. <laughs> don't do that one. But just find what works for you. So. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Don says, thanks. It was a big deal and a win to me. I really tried on the photos and take yours and Jason words to heart about photography. Absolutely. And you knocked it out of the, out of the park with, uh, with your photo set on that pair. That was one of the cooler parts about the heritage contest that it seemed like a lot of people really went to great lengths to make sure that like their photo set matched you know, the, the theme that they were going for. And you you totally did that, Don. So love those. Um, speaking of photography, something really cool is uh, our PDF guide that we dropped last year, which we have a free version of. I think it's like the first link in the description of the video. We uh, are actually getting those printed. And um, they are going to be available uh, through us and also if you purchase on angelusdirect.com, I think any purchase over a certain number that's uh, still up up in the air, it might be if you purchase over $75 worth of supplies or over $100 worth of supplies, you're going to get the PDF guide. And we went back and added a little bit to it since it's been a year since that dropped and we're printing thousands of copies. So super, so exci- exciting. super excited about mm-hmm. that. And uh, it's just going to be really cool to actually... Of course, everybody can access it on their phone nowadays, which is why we made it a digital thing. But it's still there's still something really cool about having an actual printout. And who knows, maybe this is something that you could throw in your photography bag, yeah. your camera bag. Some people your... like to write in their books too. Yeah, for sure. To highlight things. highlight things. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So excited about that one. Yep. Uh, let's see. I saw a good one here. Uh, Divinely Guided says, if someone was to drop 15 plus solid shoes all at once, do you think that will help their chance at upscaling fast? So what I think, um, what, what I what I would do in that situation, Divinely Guided, is ask myself, how can I stretch out these 15 pairs to really last me in terms of content for the next, I don't know, uh, three months, which is 90 days, which is going to get you, um, you know what I mean? That's going to get you, uh, 15, six. So that would get you what, what is that? One post every, uh, what am I trying to say? If you did 15 pairs, oh, if you had six pieces of content for every single pair, so that could be a picture, a video, a reel, something else, you could stretch that out and have content for the next three months, which is really good and super helpful. I just think that if you tried dropping 15 pairs at once and you just posted kind of like, hey, here's my final shots on Instagram, that just, you know, it would come and go quickly. You know what I mean? So it would almost like everything moves so fast nowadays on social media. So like you're kind of only, you just need to, the, the most important thing to have consistent business and and consistently grow is going to be your consistency. So if you can stretch out your content and then ha- be consistent with it and be posting every day for three months, that's going to scale your business. Not just that you dropped 15 pairs at once. It's that you had 15 pairs lined up and then had all of this content that you could do. So that's what I would do in that situation. If you see anything, I'm looking, you yeah. go ahead and take it. <clears throat> what is everybody uh what is everybody uh working on this week what did you guys knock out this week what are some upcoming projects that you have going on would love to hear about that we made a lot of progress on the course this week so we should have yeah we uh touring some venues soon yeah. itinerary and curriculum really getting dialed in and uh we're getting excited we're getting excited shooting for probably late march early april mid-april right now um just in terms of dates and uh so we're super excited about that one yeah it's finally in the works moving along moving along um okay here let's see (laughs) 
Don Russ says, will an airbrush be less coats than hand painting with a brush? Um, will an airbrush be less coats? Potentially. You know, it's it's going to depend on the color and it's going to depend on the material. It's but definitely faster. It's faster. It's, to me, you get a more even finish with an airbrush than a paintbrush. Um, yeah. So there's just not many situations where I would actually opt for hand painting versus airbrushing unless it was like, hey, I just need to do one small part or I need to... There's just not many situations where I opt for hand painting over airbrushing um, because it's just so much easier and faster and you get just a cleaner, even finish in my opinion. So, uh, Custom Creations by Jmart says, how far do you think I should space out my YouTube videos uh, and a new creator on YouTube? Whatever you can do consistently. So if that's one video a month, or if that's one video every two weeks, or if that's one video a week, that's going to be the best thing that you can do. Again, the name of the game in social media is just consistency. So whatever you can actually balance is going to be the best thing for you. And um, then like your viewers and your subscribers can start to sort of recognize a pattern within your schedule that they become more familiar with your schedule. Like, hey, this person releases a video every Saturday or every other Wednesday, or whatever the case is, there's a really good chance that you've noticed some of your favorite creators who've been on YouTube for a long time probably have some type of consistent schedule. So that's what that's what worked for that's what works for a lot of creators, and that's what I try to do. Um, wasn't able to as consistently uh, last year, but we went uh, I know a year and a half straight with releasing one video every single week, and they were almost all Wednesdays. We would throw in a few. Uh, Two minute Tuesdays here and there, sometimes two videos a week, but usually Wednesday was our our video day, and that's what um, you know, kind of trying to stick to now. So, yep, thirty looks good on you, <laughs> Arnie. Aww, <laughs> looks his birthday too. Yeah. Yep. Let's see, Ron Custom says, "What's up, Mister DeJesus and Mrs. DeJesus?" Hi. Have you ever been called Mrs. DeJesus yet? Yeah. You have? Oh, okay. By like strangers, <laughs> not like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a funny one. Why have you not been called Mr. DeJesus? Well, I mean, I didn't change my name, you know? So it's not like... It, it might be one of those recognition things. But you don't become a Mr. DeJesus until you're married, don't you? Like, you're not automatically Mr. DeJesus, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, because you're a miss if you're not married. So, you, so they don't have like a mister there's, or mister. Correct. There's um, no non-married mister. Like your teachers who aren't married, they're still, that's hey, true. Mr. Dehazes. That's you know true. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Tangent. So, yep. Simon says, what are your favorite shoes? My all-time favorite pair of shoes is the black cement Jordan 3s. That would be my favorite pair. To like work on or just in general? Just in general. But if it if I had to pick one shoe, to, if I could only work on one shoe for the rest of forever, it would be Jordan 1s. Um, Jordan threes probably aren't far behind, Yeah. but sometimes it, it's just like literally no matter what theme I could find a way to make it fit on a Jordan one, whereas sometimes you get certain themes and it's like, I don't really know how I'm going to get this to work on a pair of Jordan threes or a pair of Jordan fives. Like yeah. some themes are just trickier to fit on certain silhouettes and whatnot. So Jordan ones, air forces are probably the most versatile, uh, themes of all uh base shoes of all time when it comes to you know you can do absolutely any theme oh here's one for you kengi says does mrs de jesus like helping with the customizing shoes journey yeah i actually i really liked it um you taught me a lot along the way um you know as far as like mixing paints and like how to apply it and it's when I was doing a lot of it, painting with you was really therapeutic for me. You know, just sitting there, like, listening yeah. to a podcast or music and just painting all day. Yeah. I miss it. How come you never give me work anymore? <laughs> Which is, we're just not at that same mass production yeah, scale, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. with how many pairs we were doing before. Yeah. Something Brittany did, too, is, uh, this is probably 20, probably 13, so nine years ago, Brittany dropped a shoe 
and it was a pair of Jordan 4s that were painted in a, uh, a a Tiffany cheetah pattern. I just Googled your name the other day. And those came up? They came up, and yeah. I was like, oh, those were so cute. I yeah. forgot about them. It was so long ago. They're, like, multiple people had them as yeah. matching sets for their wedding yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So those, They're really cool. They were my favorite. Brittany... Was the she painted the design so it was a Jordan Four and it was a Tiffany upper and then it had cheetah print on some of the other panels, yeah. And um, that was a pair that did really well for us. Like a lot of the blogs, like Sneaker News, Nice Kicks, Kicks on Fire, all of them posted it, yeah. And we sold I don't even know how many of those. So many. I had my mom and my yeah. sister trying Helping to help out. me. Yeah, we that that's probably a shoe that we probably ended up doing between thirty to. 50 of yeah there was a lot it was really somewhere popular. yeah well, i mean who doesn't love leopard print yeah. tree to print who yeah. doesn't love that and the colorway yep. it was so cool and a lot of a lot of i remember a lot of guys bought them as matching sets yeah with their wives yeah. or girlfriends or whatnot i would like to know if they wear those shoes to this day. yeah like I, yeah. where are nine you guys years. If you guys are out there still nine. i want to know <laughs> are you still wearing those nine years because i have a pair yeah yeah but i never yep. wear them yep um so yeah, Brittany uh, has has been helping me since the start, and um, now I'm more just like in the background, like business side of yep, things. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because that like nobody was doing that to start. Right. I wasn't worried about that stuff. Right. All the business. But things, as, you know as what I mean. Things grew. Yeah. You needed the help yep. more in other areas yep. versus painting. Yep. But I would love to go back to it if I could. But and know. it's also like we're just like you said, we're not doing that sheer volume of right. pairs anymore. Right. right. So yeah, yeah. Brittany would be the type to say it's therapeutic to sit there while listening to true crime about people getting chopped <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> she's Let's smile on my face yeah, and painting. Yeah, she's one of those. She's one of those. So <laughs> we uh we got some good ones here. Um uh Jeffrey says, any advice on best video editing software, either for free or on a budget? Thanks from Seattle from a Southside Shy Native. Oh, very cool, Jeff. Um so my my real recommendation for anybody when it comes to software is I 1000% get it because I was like, I would illegally download softwares back in the day. Sorry. Um, uh, whoever's wa watching that gets upset by that. Um, but cause I, I mean, I was a broke college student when I started. So it was like, Hey, you know, we, and they're so expensive. Yeah, they are. They are. But I could not live without these softwares nowadays. And as somebody who has worked through, like, let me find the workarounds for the cheap, budget options or the free options there's a reason that the paid options are paid for because what you can do with them is absolutely limitless and they will make your life so much easier so much easier like there's so many times where Brittany's trying to do something in terms of graphics or whatnot and she's using a free software is it called Inkscape yes so she's mm -hmm. using a free software and it's something that will take her like five hours to do and I'm like Brittany, you could literally do that in Photoshop in five minutes. And it, it that's what happens with these different software sometimes. So yeah. if you're trying to photo edit or, or create graphics or video edit on these cheaper softwares, there there's a reason that they're they're cheaper sometimes. And so you can get the full Adobe suite and access to everything. Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is the video editor. Um all you need to do is say that you're a student and you get them all for $20 a month. I think that it's actually $50 a month, but all you need to do is say you're a student. And again, don't tell anybody. Sorry, Adobe, if you're watching this. You don't even need a student <laughs> ID. Banned. Yeah, right. I'm pretty sure you don't even need a student ID or you don't need to verify it or anything. Or there's a really good chance that you know a student, you know, a, a, a cousin, a, a, cousin, a friend, a neighbor, whatever. <laughs> you just use their ID and then, hey, punch in this verification code, whatever the case is. $20 a month and you get access to everything and I mean they just make your life so much easier because of how good and powerful they are so truly what I recommend is upgrading to these softwares but if you had to I think on Mac if you're on Mac I want to say iMovie is free and you could do a lot of stuff if you're just editing videos on your phone there's a few different ones like Splice Something like Video Hive or Video Fox is another one. But just like if it's something that you want to take serious and you know will help you, because again, these things are meant to 
create business for you. They're meant to make you money. If you're going to spend time yeah. creating videos, this is something that's going to bring you business. It's an investment. It's an investment. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, good. Just go with the, the paid option. So that's truly what I recommend. But I 1000% understand like I... I just need to save money right now. And so how I need to do it right now, how can I do it for uh, cheap, free, or, or on a budget? So I really like this question. Okay, so Chastity Taylor says, any suggestions for someone who has a regular full-time job and wants to dabble in customs? I already paint, but pretty much just commissions or themed, uh, it's scrolled away on me, or themed content for a local pop-up market. So that's pretty cool. Um, chastity. So recommendations. So you're full time and you want to dabble in customs. So I think that, um, my recommendation there is. I feel like you're either in it or you're not. It's really tough to not be. If this is, if I understand like having a hobby is one thing, but if this is something that you're really passionate about and you're excited yeah. about it, I feel like you need to go full force into it. This, this feels like something that most people are really passionate about too. Yeah. Like it's not just, let me just try. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, we get it. You know, life, family. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta, it's sometimes not you got to have a job. Drop their yeah, job exactly. And do it. I understand so, that. But, you know, just in terms then of recommendations, is just, you just need to try to be efficient with your time. That's that's going to be whether you're full time or part time. Yeah. But you're limited on time, so you really need to make your time count. You know what I mean? And it says that you're just trying to. I already paint, but just commissions or theme content for a local pop up market. Okay, so you just you're not necessarily doing customs all the time now. So it already seems that she already is dabbling in it. Like she's painted. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, that's. That's like an athlete hopping into a new sport. That's like a comparison I always make. Like, hey, do I need to have painting experience or do I need to be a drawer to yeah. do custom shoes? Well, no, but if you have prior experience, it'll only help. So, you know, you already having experience painting will absolutely help. So that's good. Um, but, yeah, just trying to be efficient with your time and just having fun with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Just that, of course, that's that's an obvious one. But trying to make sure that it's 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 something that you enjoy doing because you already have something that takes up a lot of your time, a full time job that you make money at. So this should be something that's that's fun for you and that you're passionate about. And just making sure that you're creating art that you know really just satisfies you and makes you happy and continues to inspire you and you can look at your own work and be excited by it and want to do more you know what I mean like I know I talk to so many artists who are just in the grind and they're just trying to you know fulfill orders and trying to make it and they're not even that passionate about their work that like they can't look at stuff they've done and just really enjoy it and and again feel motivated to like wow I want to do that even better now or I want to do that again but with a new added twist and things like that. So that's what I would say. Do you do restorations? I do not. I have never dabbled in the world of restorations. That's like a whole nother world. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, Marcus Mark here says, Hey guys and greetings from Scotland. Very cool. Congrats on your 200k landmark. Any plans on doing some chameleon pigment work? It's one thing I haven't seen you do yet. Cheers. Yeah, I actually, surprisingly, I don't know how, um, after this many years on YouTube, was, uh, I'm surprised that I haven't done, whether it's, you know, a, a thermal paint, where it's uh, changes with heat, or, or like you said, uh, one of those chameleon paints. It's something that I, I've just been sort of waiting to, to find the perfect reason to do it, other than just let me create a tutorial on how. I've been waiting for the perfect theme, like, hey, I want to do something where... I want to use one of these pigments or something like that. So, yeah, I do. It's something that I, I know a lot of people have requested. So hopefully that might be one that we're able to get to this year. Just time. Definitely. Time is always a problem. Absolutely. There was a question earlier. Um, I don't know who asked, like, what our ultimate, like, goal was. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Was it G Steezy? Is that what it said? Uh, yes. G Steezy 171 here says, What kind of goals are you striving towards currently? 
in your own craft. So, I mean, just personally as an artist, I just want to continue to grow. I constantly try to challenge myself to do new things. And um, like I know I've talked about this so many times, but one of the, the best things I ever did was take an, an entire month off and practice painting portraits every day. And that's something that like I think in my head I should be doing that probably like once a year where I like take a month off and just learn a new, you know, whether it's a new technique, a new aspect of the craft. Like last year, I had fully intended to take a, a month off to practice uh, recon, learn how to sew and all that. And then just that month never came because I never just forced myself to carve out the time. But uh, that is is something that I definitely like well, to do. That stood out to me because, you know, we were talking about it before that question that our, what our goal was as far as um, having these courses mm -hmm. and making them more regular. Yeah. And um, teaching your craft to other yeah. people. Yep. That's something that we're, uh, we are really pushing towards locking down a, a consistent venue here in Chicago. And uh, we want to be able to have those, you know, probably quarterly, three to four times a year. And just have that be something that just becomes a, a bigger part of our business to where I just really tell myself, okay, I need to shut down other aspects, essentially take on less commissions so yeah. then I can focus more of my time on teaching teaching, and, and really growing the courses mm -hmm. and just making every single course as good as it can possibly be. And I know that it'll never be able to get there if I'm always just so caught up in all of the other projects so that are always projects. ongoing. So yeah. um, even though I've, I've learned uh, a lot over the years to say no to a lot of things, <laughs> that's something I can still get uh, even better at also. Mm -hmm. So. Da, da, da. Uh, Jacob says, what was your first custom pair of shoes? Also, ha I have a video idea painting one shoe with airbrush and one hand painted. So Jacob, the first pair I did was actually a South Beach Jordan 6. Um, I just grabbed a pair of white Jordan 6s, grabbed some cheap teal paint from Michael's, was lo in love with the South Beach LeBron 8s, and that was the first pair that I did. And uh, in terms of that video idea, we actually, Brittany and I actually yeah, did a video. Did that. that was, uh, that's coming up on three years because Dexter was just born. <laughs> yeah, he was. And it's actually uh, hand painting versus airbrushing on a pair of... Uh, Yeezy V2s. Yeah. So Brittany hand paints a pair mm -hmm. and I airbrush a pair and we wanted to walk through it to see really would there be a big difference in terms of what happens to the fabric? Would the material become a lot stiffer when painted by hand? And we did some blind sort of feeling test with uh, Jason to see if he could spot which one was maybe a little bit softer, which one made the material potentially a little bit stiffer. Mm -hmm. And they were they, he wasn't able to spot it blindly. They still felt very similar. So that was a that was fun. interesting test and a yeah. cool video. So that's on our page. Yeah. I think it's just called like something like hand painting versus airbrushing Yeezy V2s or something yeah. like that. So that video is worth checking out. It's old. It's back yeah. there. Just keep scrolling. Yep. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Jay Carney, my uh, college roommate, uh, who would know about this stuff, says, look into open source programs, a lot of Photoshop, Illustrator, Equals that are all free. Oh, cool. So there you go. Something that you can look into, and he would know because he is the one, I've, I've mentioned him here before, the one that actually made it through architecture school. So <laughs> shout out to uh, my longtime friend, Jake, somehow made it through architecture school. God bless the kid. <laughs> Still loves it. And... Uh, He's thriving. Yeah, that's that's not easy. So, ba, ba, ba. Let's see, have you ever uh, used the jacquard paints? I have. Yeah, I'm a big fan of their metallics. Yep, like their silvers, their golds, that solar gold. Big fan. Uh, Steven says, do you actually wear your custom shoes and are you fashion focused on your personal clothing and some sneakers? So, um, do I wear my custom shoes? Absolutely. I have, uh, I literally couldn't tell you, I couldn't count how many pairs of shoes, custom shoes that I have. You always wear your custom Vans. Yeah. Those I've, are your go-to. Definitely. Definitely. And they've, how long have you had them? Years. Yeah. Long. Years. Many years. And yeah. they're still really good. Yeah. 
Um, and I just have tons of pairs. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely not fashion focused. <laughs> I'm, uh, that's just not, uh, a realm for me really like the, the fashion world or high end fashion or anything like that. I'm much simpler. Um, but yeah, uh, like in terms of if you're going to be customizing shoes, it's just such a great idea to wear your custom shoes also, because then you're going to be a walking billboard for your business. And ideally you're going to have people coming up to you and asking, you know, um, just asking questions about them and stuff. And hopefully they'll be eye catching and it's a great way to drum up business. So. And always make sure to carry your business cards around with you. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. There's times that we would forget and yep. you'd wear your shoes. Yep. We'd be at the mall. Yep. <laughs> Never had business cards. <laughs> Nowadays, you could just like pull out a QR code and have That's people true. scan you That's to true. find We're links to everything. Our age. You know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Coley here says, have you ever had a customer be upset with their customs and did you give them a refund or how do you handle it? So one way, so I haven't, ha I haven't run into that issue of somebody being upset after they got something or like that, but what, you know, where I know this could happen to people is maybe if there's not enough communication with like finished photos in terms of like showing them, Hey, you know, here's a finished photo or here's a video exactly how your shoes look before you go and send them off or before you go and deliver them that could be something that just prevents that now for me i uh almost refuse to send uh final photos most of the time because it takes away from the experience of what i want for them opening the box for the first time and i just flat out um just almost have uh just a blinding self-belief in myself that I know I'm going to be able to deliver exactly what they wanted. I'm, I'm going to be able to deliver on my vision. So I'm, I'm betting on myself that I'm going to create a, a product that's going to blow them away and there's no chance that they're going to be upset about it. So if I send them a final photo that then isn't the same as seeing the artwork in person or maybe it's not like a, a great edited photo or, you know, like I didn't capture it exactly how I wanted you know, if I just said, here, let me snap a quick photo on my messy desk because they're asking before I send them off. That's not what I want for somebody who's opening something that costs them uh, an insane amount of money to to purchase. You know what I mean? So, but I just think that like, if that's something that you're concerned of, because I know a lot of people are and a lot of people ask this question, then just have a very open line of communication with uh, with your clients. That is what I would say. Uh, Nathan here says, Hey, DeJesus, I wanted to know if I can use a varnish paint as a finisher paint on leather shoes in my country that is not Angel's brand so far, but I found the this varnish paint. Um, I'm not quite sure because I'm not familiar with the brand necessarily. Uh, maybe, but at the same time, like the the finisher in my opinion isn't going to make or break the overall durability of the shoes that's just going to come down to the prep work and the actual painting so the finisher is really going to control your sheen so i think that there's a good chance that you're probably fine um but yeah that's what that's what i would say about that uh ron says have you heard about the alpha six paint i have yep some people i know uh uh dig it Yep, they sent me some, but I just haven't I haven't had the chance to uh, play around with it, unfortunately. Greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Very cool. Very cool. Where do you get your shoelaces? Usually from Lace Lab. Check them out. Uh, let's see. I have all the uh, uh, the pairs for the uh, Heritage Contest, the top four, 
and uh, I'm super stoked to to get that video out to you guys because those four pairs are just absolutely insane. So that's going to be a real dope video, finally showing those off. Uh, Coley says, is there any way for customizers to get wholesale deals on shoes? In your experience, what is Nike's attitude towards customizers? So um, the, the simple answer, unfortunately, is, is kind of a no, just because even if you, to get a Nike wholesale deal, you, you first off need to have a brick and mortar store. Um, and then you also don't just get to pick and choose what you purchase from them. Like they're going to send you a bunch of that you're going to pay for also a bunch of other stuff too. So, uh, th that's, uh, just unfortunately very tough. Um, yeah, I wish there was a better way, especially for just people starting out. I know would love to, to save some money on getting a bunch of bulk base shoes and then being able to practice a lot of different things. But you know, if you're just starting out, I just think one thing that you can do is just grab a pair of shoes, apply your design, do all of your content, and then you can just acetone the paint off and paint over them again. That's something that I would uh, recommend doing if you didn't have, you know what I mean, other people sending you their shoes yet, but you still needed to put out new designs. That's something that I would uh, play around with. Ba -ba. Uh, Crazy says, how do you get paint off of Air Force Ones? Acetone. Acetone is going to get you paint off uh, almost anything. It is strong stuff. But yeah, oh, here's a good point from, from Daniel. Says, buy secondhand if you're starting out. Yeah, absolutely. You can go in thrift shoes. You can go on eBay and find used pairs. You know what I mean? You got to do whatever. You got to do whatever you can um, in the beginning. And something that I always say is just ask your friends and family to give you shoes uh, that you could work on and design for them also. Just say, hey, I'm willing to do uh, a free custom pair for you. Can you hand over a pair of shoes for me? And there's a good chance that they might either just hand you, uh, they might either go and buy a new pair for you to work on if you're willing to do a free design for them, or they'll just hand you a pair, you know, from, from their closet that they're no longer wearing, so... Uh, G Steezy says, what were the feelings like when your wife first started spending time supporting your passion as well? Um, so luckily for me, she's, she's been with me since the start. I think that, um, feelings like when your wife first started spending, I mean, yeah, she was just incredibly supportive from the start. So, I mean, the first time I told her I'm going to paint a pair of shoes, I mean, like, what was your first react? Like, what do you... Do you even remember? When you said you weren't going to... No, like, I'm... No, just still in school, but yeah. hey, I'm going to paint a pair of shoes. Yeah, I do remember. I thought it was silly. Like, did, had you ever <laughs> even heard of it before? No. Okay. I thought it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, but back then, my mindset... I mean, obviously, I'm a totally different person than I was back then. My mindset back then was... No, schools is, is what yeah. is important Definitely. and getting a nine to five is what is yeah. important yeah. because that was what was drilled into my head. Yeah. So I was worried yeah. at first, yeah. you know, and it, it, it took a lot of me to be like, okay, this is something that he is really passionate about. Um, you know, I ha I'm not, I don't want to be the one to stop him from living his dream. So I'm going to be supportive. Because I knew that you would do the same thing for me. But it wasn't easy. I'm sure. It was not easy because my mindset. Yeah. So, yeah. thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> I have grown and yeah. my mind has opened since then. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that I, you know, we were able to get through that and work through it. And Because it hasn't been easy. No. It has not. No. It's been, it's been really, really hard. And we had our ups and downs, but... I mean, makes you stronger the in the proof, long run. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. your hard work does did pay off, yeah. and you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember. So, do you remember the on Labor Day when I told you I'm quitting school? Yeah, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I cried. Oh, I was man. I was just scared. Yeah, I was just so scared because, like I said, I'm like, oh my god, like. 
what if he doesn't make it? And, you know, obviously I feel like I'm just being really real here because, you know, (laughs) what if he didn't make it? And then it would be on me. I'm like, oh, no, I have to make it. I have to be successful. I have to be a good nurse and I have to make good money because what if he doesn't make it? Yep. But, you you know, like when people are really, when someone's really passionate about something and it shows, you just, you have to trust them and like let them do it. Let like support them and lift them up and just be there for them because then, you know, how are they going to succeed if you're not successful, you're not being supportive of them. So, I mean, eventually I was able to be like, you know what? I don't care. I'm with you. Ride or die. We're doing it. Let's just do it. Yeah. Got through it. Yeah, we did. Got through it. So yeah, I, uh, I just, I, I feel incredibly lucky, um, that I know not everybody will have as, as much support as I did, you know, from, from not only my wife who just obviously a girlfriend at the time, we were only a few years dating when I said I was going to leave school, but also my parents who, you know, my entire life, uh, thought I was going to end up being being an architect and that's yeah. you know sort of the you kind of rocked everybody's world <laughs> yeah like the, almost in a way that the promise I made to them that was what I wanted to do so then to do something completely different and yeah literally something completely different yeah um but your mom and dad they literally yeah they so even supportive. Bed eye. No. they were like okay yeah that's fine do it right let's do it right yeah super super supportive so um that's uh, and obviously that's obviously super helpful and um, yep, and makes you just more uh, what is the word I'm looking for um, confident in what you're trying to do. So I hope that for everybody, yeah, that they have that support system because it means everything. Yeah, you know it's everything. And you know how uh, it's a cliche, but a lot of people will say, "I want to prove my." I want to prove my doubters wrong and stuff. I think I feel like you hear this from a lot of athletes and stuff. Like I want to prove my doubters wrong. People that didn't think I'd make it all yeah. this stuff, which is, is totally everybody is fueled. Everyone has different motivations, yeah. and that is absolutely something that some people can be fueled by. But something that has always resonated with me more so than that is the opposite. That like I want to prove people that believe in me right. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know, my wife supporting me, my parents. I want to prove them right that hey, you know, I said I'm going to do this. After leaving that and betting on myself, well, now I want to prove it to them that um, I'm going to stick to it and I'm going to find a way to get it done. So, I mean, but we are after seeing the things that you had already worked on and like just seeing the fire in your eyes, like I kind of felt like a sense to him like he's going to be fine. Yeah, he's going to do good. He's going to do really well. But I don't think it's going to get this big. (laughs) (laughs) Me either. Me either. So me either. Uh, let's see. Cyber Zach here says, is it possible to get the shiny Jordan 11 patent leather look with the Angelus high gloss finisher? So the Angelus high gloss finisher will not get you very close, but the new Angelus high gloss four coat will get you a lot closer because the four coats are much better finishers than the old previous Angelus finishers. So the Angelus, um, high gloss four coat out of all the finishers, even compared to like the Liquid Kicks high gloss, to me is the shiniest. So that will get you the closest. I just did a video on that uh, where I actually show some comparisons uh, probably about three, four weeks ago. And I think the video is, it's me holding a bottle of the four coat in the thumbnail. So go and check that one out if you're interested in seeing uh, some comparisons on it. Ron Custom says, what was her first reaction to your first NFL or NBA pair of shoes? And do you remember <laughs> quiz time? Jeopardy. Da, na, na, da, na, na, you na. have done so many shoes. Uh, nope, nope. Back to okay, the beginning. Wait. First you're... NBA player. NBA? NBA. That's basketball, right? Yeah. Okay. First NBA player. Was it the Bulls? It was the Bulls. Okay, it was the Bulls. Yeah. And do I remember what it looked like? Do you remember his name? And what it looked like? Was he wasn't a big player, was he? Was he tall know. or was no he way. like no, a I mean, good? Like, no, I mean no, like was he like an all star or anything? No, no, he was at the end of the bench. Oh my, and I met him. You met him. You. Yeah. I don't remember his yeah. name. Malcolm Thomas. Yeah, Malcolm Thomas. I knew that. Malcolm no, yeah, Thomas. I knew that. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. I remember being super excited. I'm like, I remember driving with you to where they practice. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. this is so cool. I should know what this is, but I do, and I'm like, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But like then again, at the same time, I was like. 
I really don't know how cool this is because I don't watch sports, but I'm sure yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, let me pull it up. I'm going to have to find a picture of those. Do you remember the first football player? No. Do you know what team he was on? Was it San... No. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, man. Okay, so let me pull this up. <laughs> let me see if this will main shot too. Will this do it? Where's... Should I have one video capture? This should show my phone. Give me one sec. Let's see here. Properties. iPhone app. Are you trying to share your screen? Yeah. Okay. So do you remember first football player? You don't. Did you? No, I'm sorry. No. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> trying to call me out. Yep. <laughs> Oh, so. Oh, there it is. It's going to be full screen for now, so I won't be on here for too long, but I'll show. So this was first NBA player Malcolm Thomas. I am all of five foot six on a good day, <laughs> so he is a good. You he's look a, so he's a good six nine. Oh literally. my god, you without the beard. Yeah, um, and there's the pair. So the Dirty Bread Elevens. They were used. No, but that was like the name when you blacked out the midsole on the Bread Elevens. That's what it was called. <laughs> So, this was before I used any stencils, so the so the logos <laughs> not that good. Um and I'm I'm not a fan of so I I'm not proud of this oh pair. Oh my god. It's they very are so cool. Funny. I don't like when people do uh, just cuz I don't like how it looks. I don't like doing logos on top of stitching like this or on a pair of Jordan 3s if you do a logo on top of the stitching. Um so like that, for example. Um, <laughs> damn, it ain't worth that type of laugh. Who? I'm sorry. Damn. Dylan, you have come so far. <laughs> you gave, no, you did not give yeah. him the shoes like that. Yeah. Fun, <laughs> fun fact about these too. I had to do this logo oh twice because I hit these with the Krylon matte spray. This was still when this was my... Uh, uh, the Krylon Matte Spray was my preferred finisher. And if you don't shake it well enough and you apply the finisher, they end up having this weird frozen look on top of them. Like there's just this weird coat because you didn't shake the can well. And I didn't shake it well, so I had to redo the logo <laughs> twice, um, which is funny. And oh then I put God, his name and number so on the inside. Bad. It's not Dylan, good. Those it's, are not good. Horrible. it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. And look at this. Look oh at this. Look at this photo. I thought I was so clever. <laughs> oh my god! I'm I turned the laces. Laughing. That's fucking hilarious. I turned the oh, laces sorry, into the bulls logo. I'm really sorry. Yeah, come on. I don't swear on this channel. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. So, I yeah. cannot. That is. Uh, that's good stuff. And look, I just saw this too. Brittany and I. Oh, look at the quality. Jesus. Look at this potato quality. <laughs> There's uh, Brittany and I at a sneaker convention. <laughs> that With is funny. the original funny. logo. That is funny. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So first, uh, <laughs> here's the Tiffany shoes we were talking about earlier. So that's the pair. That's probably the first display pair that you painted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sick. Top quality. Sick. That's, yeah. man, I can't get over those shoes. First NBA, <laughs> first NBA player and then first rapper, too. So the first rapper was Trinidad James. Brittany took this photo. Pretty cool, huh? You're welcome. <laughs> so, yep, <laughs> there we go. Good stuff, man. Good Ooh, stuff. I'm Fun sweating. little trip there. That was funny. I, I need... <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> I didn't he have... He was probably like, man, this poor kid... Oh man! I feel bad no, for him. no, he liked him, man. He liked. Okay, he he's wore not them. Tell you the he wore, truth. Look here. This is now. I got to show it. Now, <laughs> now, I, now I got to show the proof. Okay, so as you'll be able to tell from the picture here, he actually wore them. So this is in the the Barclays. You could tell by the the <laughs> very unique wood, and um, they, those were so. Bad. These were posted around, man. I remember. 
you working on those like vividly. Yeah. And I thought they were so good. Yeah. I'm like, man. Yeah. You're going places. Crap. <laughs> those were crap. But you, know, but you know, you have to start somewhere. Yeah, you do. You absolutely you do. Have. And look at that. And look where it, look where it took you. Look yeah. where you are now. Yeah. That's you got to start. That's you just got to do it. That's you just got to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Um, <laughs> oh man. That is too funny. There's probably some other good stuff on oh, here dude, too. I'm like wheezing. <laughs> some other funny pairs, man. Ooh. Oh man, that is too funny. That is too funny. You have that on your Instagram? Those were up on Instagram, yeah. <laughs> Do you, are they still I was there? damn proud of those. <laughs> are, you, are they still? Yeah, there? those are up there. If you scroll back, look at that date at the top. Oh my April fifteenth, twenty thirteen. Nine years ago. Wow, Dylan. Nine years ago. Wow, that's incredible. Crazy. Oh my crazy i missed your old logo i really like that i had a phone case with it remember we both did where's it at i don't know was it just there <laughs> oh at the top there yeah so for anybody yeah i don't it... i don't know if anybody because it's nowhere up on youtube so this was the original logo Chris, they say there's they straight, straight from, from walmart, walmart. <laughs> <laughs> The the uh, the original Hayes's Customs logo was was a was a bull a red bull holding a uh, set of paintbrushes and wearing Air Yeezy ones, and then when I went and got the business uh, all businessfied and got everything all registered and all this stuff, my attorney said we had to change the logo. So, yeah. Oh my god, that's yep. so funny. Good times, man. Good times. Ooh. Oh my. That's insane. Sorry if you guys are hearing extra noises. It's probably me because I was cackling like a witch. I'm really sorry. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully that was us just moving around the I mic think and it was everything. Just me. Sorry, I was like literally yeah. banging on the table. Sorry. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that is funny stuff, man. <laughs> Wow, Dylan, I I still can't get over that. The the Thomas too. I know. Yeah, let's let's go one more time. <laughs> I can't get over it. Oh my god. <laughs> let's go to that one more time. Oh my god. <laughs> Where is it at? Where is it at? <laughs> I remember I couldn't get the O right, <laughs> and the O is okay, obviously it's, the worst it's, letter. It's though must like it's like the the T H O is so big. Big, and yeah, then... yeah. Could use some work. <laughs> I remember I remember really struggling with the three too because this pair was really worn. Yeah. So they were creased. Oh, okay. So they were yeah. they were used. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that's hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. Can I zoom in on the bull? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that bull is extra frumpy. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man! I can't, I can't. Oh, you gotta start somewhere. You have to start. Somewhere. You got to, man. You got to. <laughs> you learn and you grow from it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh man! Let's see here. <laughs> Jimmy says, those Charger Jays you did are absolutely phenomenal. I need a Ravens pair. Let me know, Jimmy. I would be glad to uh, cook up a uh, Ravens pair. Yeah, man, the uh, the feedback on uh, on that video is, is incredible. <laughs> and something just... <laughs> You're just going to be distracted. Um, uh, something, something that's really cool about that is... Uh, I posted a, a reel to Instagram, which was a very, very condensed version of the YouTube video. And so the YouTube video is like an hour long thing of, of me working on the shoes, showing a ton of the process from start to finish. And then the Instagram reel is just like uh, all of the 10 main parts split into like two second clips. And just the feedback that you get from posting that type of video 
versus posting what I think was a cool photo, the finished photos that I took of the shoes where I had them floating sort of above the turf, the feedback you get is going to be just the way people interact with the video content nowadays, I'm just going to continue to double down on is just so important for anybody who's so one of the main questions that we'll always get is, how, how can I grow? What are things that I need to do? I'm trying to talk about serious stuff now. <laughs> and you're just laughing and reading the chat, I know. <laughs> look, at, look at what Melika says. I want a video of you guys reviewing your Kid, old customs. I, you know I told you earlier in the summer. You saw I had it on the <laughs> list. I said, Brittany. Last summer, I said, Brittany, I want to do a video of you reviewing my old work. And you said you were down. It would just be me cackling. Clearly, the people want it. So, <laughs> Clearly, the people want it. We should. We should. That would be a great video. <laughs> the bull said, why you do me like that, Dylan? <laughs> oh, man. But anyways... It's just the way that people interact, you're going to get so much bang for your buck doing video content nowadays rather than just, it's not enough to just be a badass artist anymore and post photos. Like that's only going to get you so far. You know what I mean? I just think I'm just going to continue to, to really just double down on how important that is. And your reach is just going to be so much further if you're able to create engaging video content. And uh, I just see that more and more every single week so <laughs> da, da, da. yeah like daniel says here instagram ain't for photos anymore it's sad yeah and that's so true you know what i mean because instagram was literally created as this square photo sharing app that's oh God, that's I what it was a picture on instagram and so long. It's always stories or yeah, reels. Right, right. And a lot of days, sometimes people don't even scroll their feed anymore. Sometimes people just yeah, go on Instagram and just true. watch stories. Yeah. So it's just a matter of you need to some people just some it's very easy to just be stuck in your own ways and not just pay attention to like what's working for other people. And just ask yourself, okay, what do I need to do differently? Like sometimes it's okay to have self-realization that what I'm doing right now maybe isn't perfect or maybe it's outdated. Maybe yeah. it's time for me to, to to change my ways a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Everybody can, can uh, the, the social media landscape is always going to be changing. So if you want to win at it, you just need to stay up to date with it. So like sitting there and just complaining that my work isn't getting shown because of the algorithm or I'm so mad that I'm shadow banned or look at the, I have no engagement. Well, it's time to really look in the mirror and say, what do I need to do differently? Because I promise you that the 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 platforms, the Insta, the, the algorithm, none of it's out to get you. None of it's mad at you. It didn't just randomly say, I'm going to shadow ban this person. I'm going to randomly uh, no longer let anybody see their work. It's not out to get you. It's just sometimes you need to change with the platforms. And it's yeah. easy to not to because it's easy to just be stuck in your ways. So. That was where he was from. That was where he was from. <laughs> but it's so, it was so sweet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you not use stencils back then? Or like... No, I didn't use stencils for like my first five years. Until I moved into the studio downtown. I never had a stencil Those cutter. So bad. They needed some work, all right? Still has them. They need some work. Do you think he still wears them? I doubt it. And nine years ago. Nobody <laughs> but basketball players change shoes. Constantly. Like they changed their socks. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. <laughs> that was good stuff. <laughs> Melika, me too. Just when people <laughs> just, I, I just, when you just say, when you just use that as an excuse for why you're not growing, that you're shadow banned or the algorithm hates you, like, you just need to do something different. Like the Instagram didn't just spin a wheel and say, let's go ahead and shadow ban DeJesus custom footwear today. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you just get really stale. Sometimes like Instagram is just going to say, hey, a person like only so much of this person's audience is engaging with their content. 
So we're not going to show it to new people because the people that already follow them aren't engaging with it. So why are we going to spread it even further when we could spread somebody else further who's doing, you know, funny Instagram reels or something? So you just need to you just need to change it up sometimes. What does shadow band even mean? Like people just say that I have 10,000 followers and now Instagram's only showing it to two, 200 of my followers. Oh, I, I've never heard that term before. Yeah. It's when you care, when, you, <laughs> when, you're, when you're balls deep into caring about social media and growing on it. Oh, okay. Then you say, oh man, I'm shadow banned because yeah. look, nobody sees my work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I remember before, like when TikTok wasn't really that big yet, yeah. I remember you talking about it a lot. Like, man, I feel like I should really get started on this. I feel oh, like this man. might be the next big thing. I know. And it's so true, though. Yeah. But, like, now, now look where it's at. Yeah. Especially when COVID started. I, I feel know. like that's when it really got yeah. big. Yeah. And, and I was saying it the year prior. Yeah, like, sure. I, I need to be on there. You were trying to explain it yeah. to me. I'm like, that sounds so stupid. Yeah. Why would anyone want to do that? Right. But, like, you... Yeah. Yeah, it sounds stupid, but you should have jumped on it. I because, know. Because, like, look, where, look know. where it's at now. Like I people know. People are posting the craziest shit on there. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's the best time to grow on any of the platforms is yeah. early on. And, like, yeah. I, I, luckily for me, I grew pretty early on um, in terms of uh, Instagram. So, like, yeah. I joined Instagram... <laughs> in uh 2011 and i grew to like 70,000 followers within like three or four years and then i didn't grow at all literally like within a thousand or two thousand followers for yeah. like three or four years but then over the last like two years um i've grown a little bit on instagram but a huge chunk of my growth was just very early on and um yeah you know, I, I've tested a lot of different things on Instagram, and I know something that's helped me grow over the last couple of years is just being consistent with with putting video content on on Instagram and such. So, uh, do you really need a stencil maker, Chicago Bulls logo? I mean, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter what the logo is. If you have a stencil maker, it's going to be precise. Whereas when you're doing it by hand, and I oh, mean, yeah, that's, and on that portion of a Jordan 11, that's that's a little bit bigger than a quarter. But I meant just a stencil, just for like the lettering. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. so hard. Yeah, lettering. Like, yeah. yeah, that is the yeah. logo is one thing, but like yeah. the lettering, which is not the best. No, no, that could uh, <laughs> that could that could use some rework. <laughs> Yeah, Daniel here says I think a lot of people care too much about likes and shares and saves, etc. Do what you. Do what you want to do. Do what you enjoy. And if something does well, it's a bonus. Absolutely. Like, yeah, like the most important thing, it's easy to be bogged down by that. It's easy to like, in, it's easy to like input your entire like value as an artist into things like likes and shares and saves and be like, I put my everything into this piece and it didn't get likes, it didn't get shares and then feel like, wow, I must not be a good artist or yeah. whatever the case is. It's but It's so easy to get sucked into that. It's so easy. Whereas like. To constantly look at it and check on yep. it and read the comments. It's yep. like it's really dark yeah absolutely and like the most important thing like you said is like like remembering why you started it you know what I mean? and some people started to get likes and shares and they see other people that blow up and they want to do that too but like most people start because either they have a love for sneakers or they have a love for art or you know what i mean they would love to do it even if uh instagram wasn't there you know what i mean yeah. so that's uh Literally, the first pair of shoes I painted was before I joined Instagram. How did you post them? Post them Facebook. Oh, Facebook sneaker yeah, groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So, um, yeah, like you just need to, <clears throat> you, you, your, your value of yourself can't be tied up into how many likes and shares things get. But at the same time, if this is your business, if this is your livelihood, it's okay to take it serious and just treat it as data. You know what I mean? Don't treat it as like your value, which is what I keep bringing up, but treat it as, okay, here, this post performed well. Well, why did it perform well? Did it perform well because of the time of day I posted? Did it perform well because of the theme of the shoes? Did it perform well because of the photo quality? Did it perform well because I just got lucky? that I posted it at this time or whatever, or because Instagram was in a good mood or, or whatever the case is, but you just need to 
look at it as data and then okay this one didn't perform as well okay what could be the factors could it be that i posted it at a weird time of day from for where my following is at could it be that um what are you know maybe people don't like this shoe or this theme doesn't resonate with as many people okay cool more people liked when i did that style of work well maybe i'll consider that you know what i mean so that's uh something to at least keep in mind with it Uh, let's see. What is your stencil cutter called? I use a uh, Silhouette Cameo. I've seen a lot of people ask about the, uh, how I did the um stitching on the on the chargers pair and so that's that's definitely one that we're gonna do a uh, tutorial on because i know for a long time i would painstakingly try to paint every little thread by hand and not get the paint anywhere else and then when i found this really weird method of a q-tip and and too soft and acetone then all of a sudden it, it just makes your life so much easier because it's almost like you're you're fake dying the um stitching Whereas like when you mix your paint with too soft, it almost becomes a little bit of a dye in which paint sort of sits on top of a surface. That's what paint does. Like when you paint a, a leather Air Force One, the paint is literally sitting on top. But when you paint like the sock liner on a Jordan 1 or on an Air Force One and you do it correctly, you know, with the right amount of too soft and heat setting, the paint is is really seeping into the material. So it's almost like a dye. Um, so with this method, you're almost kind of like dyeing the stitching and then you're really easily able to clean it off the midsole. So I know that's one that we need to do a uh, tutorial on soon. Da, da, da. Let's see. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got about five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Went by fast. It did. It sure did. Thank you guys for hanging with us. Um, I saw one that I wanted to touch on earlier. What was it? I don't know how you read those so fast. There's so many. It's a feeling. Um, uh, Ryan says, I feel like sneaker culture blowing up more in general has led to customizing uh, drafting behind it. I see way more people posting customs lately. Might be the algorithm showing me it though. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like if you're just constantly engaging, maybe you're liking a lot of, you know, custom shoe pages and stuff, then yeah, you know, the algorithm smart. It's going to show you even more because it knows that you like it. But yeah, I think that there's absolutely, it's a, it's a growing thing because of not only sneaker culture becoming bigger, but you know, just more and more people doing custom shoe content on, platforms like youtube and tiktok and uh instagram and then there's always these new trends that pop up that make even more people want to do it you know like f right now a huge trend is the coffee dye and things like that and that's something that blows up on different platforms and that gets new people wanting to test out the the world of custom shoes and and then it grows from there so uh can you make a video on advantages, disadvantages of a studio at home versus renting a place? That's cool. That's a good one. Because you've done that. I've done that. I've done that. That's cool. I will say right off the bat that one of the perks of um, renting a space is that you know when to stop working. Yeah. And that's a huge, huge problem when you work from home or you have yeah. your studio at home. You don't know when or just, it's just like the discipline yeah. you need to be like, okay, no, I need to stop at this time and I can't come back to it, you know? Yeah, because I don't stop working. No, he doesn't stop. <laughs> Ever. Ever. No. Um, I feel that's what I've had to do and that's what I need to do to get the business to where I want it to go. Yeah, for sure. I know why you do it. Right. But it's like at the same time, it's like... Is I have no work-life separation. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's not something I plan to do forever. No, I know. You know what I mean? And it's not like I could use the excuse, well, I'm just starting out. You no, know what I mean? Yeah, I can't yeah, use that yeah. excuse now. Um, but I also know I was at my, I don't know, this 
would probably be something better saved for the video. But I felt at my most unhappy with where the business was going and where I was when I rented a studio because I had to leave work behind. And at that time, I didn't work weekends. So I would only work Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I never, I, um, I very, very rarely, like maybe one Saturday per month would work a weekend. But I took weekends off um, for a few years, a couple years. And um, yeah, I just, I, I felt really stale in the business at that point. And that was after, that was probably like year six and seven in business. So to feel stale at that point and to also feel like, damn, am I not, am I never going to get there? You know what I mean? Am I ever going to get over that hump? Is this ever going to be something where, you know, this is where I'm extremely comfortable and I'm never stressed about bills or anything like that. Like it was still very stressful then trying to grow it. So yeah. I was at my most uneasy then I could say for sure. Yeah, and it wasn't cool. just because I had studio rent, like that was not the only factor, but I had to commute there. Mm -hmm. um, but what was great is, I mean, I mean, so many people come to hang out. Yeah. It was so cool to have our studio was a few blocks away from it was in downtown Chicago, and it was a few blocks away from where the Bears played, Soldier Field. So we would, you know, we were able to have players come by and stuff. Yeah, that was and cool. It was just cool that, was that it was really in. Cool space. Yeah, it was cool space. So really it was cool. in downtown Chicago. Yeah. So we were able to just have, I don't know, just this communal space where we constantly had just creative people in there because uh, my partner Chris started another business in there, Boosted Stripes. And um, that's where we met Jason. And Jason always had his friends that were photographers yeah, and creators school, in like, there. Down the block. Yeah, Jason went to school <laughs> down the block. Yeah, so. And um, we hosted art galleries in there because yeah, there was another nice. just separate artist who was in the on the same floor as us in the building. It was an old printing building, just kind of warehouse space. And um, yeah, I think that would be a cool video, though. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It would be a cool video, just though. Just you know, elaborate a little bit more. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Um, and it also, it, it really depends on your personality type and where you're at, you know, kind of in your family life and yeah, your, just where you're at, what you need. Do you need that work-life separation? Right. Can you actually do it? Because like, I quite literally could not do it right. You know, like right now, if I didn't work any weekends and if my, if I wasn't able to go work at night after you guys go to sleep and stuff, <laughs> like if I had to only be at work from nine to five right now. I wouldn't be able to function. You know what I mean? I know that's not normal. I feel like that just comes with the territory, though, like with this job. Like, yeah. There is no structure to it. Right. There, there, for sure. I, I feel like there almost can't be. For sure. Well, that's for another video. Yeah, that's for another video. That's a good one. We got to go soon. We do. All right. Uh, last one here. Um, Colin said, what's the best way I should sell my shoes? I have like six pairs of Air Forces and I have them for sale on my website and I've been banned from every selling platform because of doing designer brand designs. Yep. So the, uh, any of the big platforms, Etsy, all of them, they're going to take, take down, you know, LV work, Supreme, yeah. Gucci, uh, it's Dior, like all, any of those. wordplay basically, right? You have to be careful of how you yeah, handle and that. Yeah, so I mean, like, the obvious answer is doing original work, you know what I mean? But other than that, I you know, if you're just... It essentially sounds like you're kind of trying to offload these six pairs and then maybe do something else. So I would just be posting about them on, on Instagram and whatnot, you know what I mean? And post a bunch of TikTok videos about them and say, here, I have a size nine and a half and here's how much they cost and i would just make a, a you'll sell them if you create a, a viral tiktok video you know what i mean and just keep testing out different things you already have the shoes done so post different types of content on instagram and tiktok and you'll find a way to sell those but then just moving forward like this is something that any customizer might have to work through sometimes you just need to pivot where you thought you were going to take things you know what i mean so here i thought i was going to make a living doing these designer brand shoes but then all of a sudden the platforms crack down on me not being able to do those. So then you got to pivot from what you're doing. So, yep. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this beautiful Friday afternoon. It snowed a bunch here in Chicago today. Yay. Yep, got to love it. So really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. This was a fun one. And, uh, I had fun. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming on with us. 
The people were glad to have you, as you can tell. They enjoyed your laughing at me <laughs> and roasting me. We're going to need to do a uh, you reacting to old work video. I would love to. That one's coming up. I won't, I won't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Give the people what they need to see. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, make sure you go and check out the newest episode of Customize and Chill if you haven't already. Back-to-back -back weeks with nearly hour-long videos. Hour-long you got some weekend entertainment to catch up on if you haven't already. So, all right, guys, everybody have a Bye, great, guys. safe, happy, healthy weekend, and we will see you guys next weekend. time. Take care.